Are you guys being faced with collection companies um, harassing you, calling you? Right now, for the month of October 2019, we have a special promotion at BuildWord Strategies, 25% off your enrollment. So we wanted to go ahead and share a lot of content information so that you guys could go ahead and just take advantage of it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Take advantage of the promo. There's gonna be a link below. Click on it, it's gonna take you straight on to a subscription page right and go ahead and fill out your information talk to you guys soon hey friends it's jay lobos coming back to you on another episode and on today's episode i wanted to go ahead and let you guys out there that are considering paying a collection don't pay that collection without watching this video first don't do it and by all you guys obviously i don't know if you guys um are aware but we have a um, newcomer here Berto, into the channel you guys should know me <laughs> um with bws been here for a while Definitely, he's obviously our, our sales manager, but nevertheless, we wanted to go ahead and talk about a little um, situation, <laughs> a scenario that actually occurred um, to one of our customers, and we just wanted to go ahead and give you guys, share the experience that we went through and the process that we're actually going through right now. So, if you guys have found yourself in a collection situation, meaning mm -hmm. that you have a collection that entered your credit report, and you're obviously considering of paying it, before paying it, obviously get as much data as possible so that you're able to make an educated decision. And for you guys out there watching this video for the first time, watching the channel for the first time, obviously go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, and um, go ahead and, and put that notification bell in there so that you guys continue to watch more information on credit because on this channel we talk about credit, finances, uh, mortgages, things along the lines just to basically prepare people yeah. Uh, through your financial process and um, so let's go ahead and dive really fast <laughs> into this situation uh, um, I for example like th this is a good topic because Nevertheless, this is the topic that comes often the most uh, especially with our clients I'm constantly on the phone. So mainly I hear about collections that uh, I went ahead and I disputed this account it came off of my report but then the same collection the same account came back but uh, with another name Different account number, same exact amount, but a different, a, a different color, a different. Why does that happen? Absolutely, and that's exactly what I wanted to go ahead and touch on. Um, you know, the scenario happened to one of our customers. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman actually enrolled his wife into the program uh, with two negative items. Um, those two negative items actually was one charge off and one collection. Um, the collection was actually one of the biggest concerns they had, just given the fact that it was something. Uh, it was actually a bill from T-Mobile, and the and the bill, uh, I guess in a sense, it was something that they felt that it was not their negligence, it was actually the negligence of the, of the original creditor. Yeah. Um, but with that said, obviously it was sold to a collection company. Mm -hmm. uh, they were in the process of obviously purchasing a home and through that process, um, they came across us through another friend that referred them over to us from a mortgage company and we started working on their file. And uh, through the process of working on the file, one of the things that we do out here at Builder Strategies, we gave them a free credit evaluation. Um, you know, obviously we like to give clients as much information as possible because yeah, we, we they, obviously know that's important. They need to know exactly what's going, what's going on, what's gonna happen and you know, how everything is going to happen. So to an extent, one of the things that we always like to go ahead and give people is probabilities of success. What tends to happen to collection companies for you guys out there um, that are not so familiar with the process, mm -hmm. uh, in order for an account to go into collection status, first off, it has to get charged off, meaning right. that it has to come from an original creditor, such as either um, the ones that are really common are from hospitals, as we, um, as you guys yeah. know. Hospitals, the one that he just said about T-Mobile, like, T like cell phone bills. You guys know that there's like this thing that turn your phone in and the other company gives you a new phone and they supposedly absorb the debt. Normally they don't, so that's a big issue. Yeah, that could, can turn, that could turn into a collection, but mm -hmm. anything that's basically unpaid for a process of six months, um, the original creditor, Macy's, Bank of America, Chase, those type of companies could go ahead and charge off the item. Once the item is right. charged off, then you have, you're susceptible to other companies such as uh, Portfolio Recovery, Enhanced Recovery, um, all these other um, collection companies that basically come through yeah. and they try to buy a bulk of these accounts um, through these original creditors for pennies on the dollars. So Literally. It, yeah, literally, like guys, you will be amazed. It's like me, me coming to Husto, like, hey Husto, look, I know you already got paid on that account, but I'm gonna, I'm willing to give you five cents upon every dollar uh, that that guy owes you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you already made a profit, so this is 
profit on top of profit. So what happens is, what Berto's referring to is, basically what happens is it goes through a profits and loss. Profits yeah. and loss is that the state gives the creditor a tax write-off. Through that tax write-off, what happens is that now, whatever it is that the total amount that that company was supposed to declare mm -hmm. as their taxes, let's say 100,000 to keep it simple, and they were not able to collect $1,000 from me because of X and Y reason, I stopped paying them, then instead of them paying taxes on 100,000, they're gonna pay taxes on 99,000. Right. So what happens is, there, you have collection companies, they come, and it's what Berto's talking about, they buy the debt for pennies on the dollars. Mm -hmm. um, they'll pay a very small amount. Again, they bulk them, they group them together. That's how they're able to get them for pennies on the dollars. Yeah. And so now the original creditor gets a tax write-off, good for them. Um, and then in that particular case, then the debt gets bought by a collection company, which again, it's it's a business, it's profits for them as well. It's a and third then, party. Then, but what happens is, this is where we tell people, don't pay a collection. Yet, right? Or don't I mean, be so don't don't be so quick to pay a to collection. Pay. This is what happened, guys. Remember this. First of all, you originally never signed any type of contract with that third-party company. You went with the original creditor. So how? This is what I tell my clients normally. Why are you so fast to come out of pocket without even doing your due diligence? How do you even know that that collection company is certified to, to build in your state? How you know? Do you even know that they're a legitimate collection company? I mean, there's a lot of due diligence it's a lot, and a lot of information that goes into play when before you start making payments to any collection company. Definitely, so in, in a sense too, you have to do your homework. Yeah. Homework in what sense? If you get a utility, if you get a bill from a collection company, you have to go ahead and cross-reference that with mm -hmm. your credit report. Because sometimes too, is what Berto was saying, some, de some collection companies are fly by night, um, they're actually not even registered, they're not even legally able to go ahead and collect. Right. And what tends to happen is that sometimes, obviously, we're so apprehensive of paying these people because we're so scared. Sometimes they use scare tactics such as letterheads from attorney's offices, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the verbiage sometimes. As a matter of fact, there's a new way of them collecting, which is now they're, they're printing out the court document um, yeah. They're not even. They're not even signed. They're not notarized. They're nothing like that. But obviously, if you get a court document saying that you owe somebody some money, you, you freak out. We're it's gonna like, freak out. We're oh gonna try. God. You know what, what? What am I gonna do? I gotta pay it. Before you do all that, yeah. do your homework. And what's the homework on that aspect of it? Cross-reference it with your report. Second thing is shoot off a dispute. Yep. Try to see the fidelity of the information. In that particular case, if you send out a dispute to that collection company, or in this particular case to the bureaus, first off, because you can do both, mm -hmm. you could do the, the, the creditor, which in this case is the collection company, you could even do it to the original creditor if you like as well. There's very different tactics, some things that we exercise here right. at Buildware Strategies. We're not gonna leave any kind of stone unturned, so we're gonna look for all avenues, but nevertheless, if you go ahead and send out a dispute, try to find out in that particular case what information they have on you. Exactly. Sometimes two people kind of feel obligated. I Look, mean, like I gotta pay the debt. This is what happens, and I, I, I judge myself as a consumer because a lot of the times the reason why we are so fast to go and pay something is because we don't know what it is. Remember that what we don't know most of the time costs us money. Yeah. And because we're so, we don't understand the collection aspect of it or the process, we tend to or to avoid any issues or oh I, I don't want to go to court or I don't want to get sent to jail or this and that. Let me just pay. It. No, that is the wrong thing to do, and we've proven that more than once. Well, in that particular case too, it hits you on two different reasons because it depends too on what the objective or what the goal is. Mainly because in this particular case, if you're somebody who you don't care about having healthy credit. Know this, guys. If you pay the collection off, the collection will remain on your credit report. Right. So if you engage in a payment plan, and another thing too, look at the statute of limitations. How long has that debt been trying to get collected? Because right. sometimes in the state of Florida, obviously anything over five years, then they cannot sue you. So for you guys right. out there that are kind of, you know, pressing, they're going to sue me, they're going to take me to court, um, they might arrest me. All of those things, you know what? We we overthink them. Yeah. Eighty percent of the things we think about never come to pass. But nevertheless, if you're doing your homework, in that case, you're looking at the state, you Google um, statute of limitations on debt. If it's way past the statute of limitations, then we know that they can't sue you but nevertheless uh, once you go ahead and, and 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 look into the account you send out the dispute over to the bureaus uh, if, you, if, if the account is on your credit report then you do send out a dispute to the bureaus if the account is not on your credit report then the likelihood of them actually taking it to the next level is slim to none it's very unlikely uh, so one thing and sorry to interrupt one thing very important of what Husto is saying 
keep in mind that he's constantly saying, look into your credit report, guys. Yeah. The only way that you'll be able to do that is if you have some sort of credit monitor, which we lack a lot of times yeah. as consumers. So, so no, no, and definitely you have to obviously monitor your credit. Right. So one of the things, and why we're sharing all this information because it's important for us to know this because this way we're able to make those educated decisions. For the customer that we actually had, um, we went ahead and we sent over, the, the account was actually reporting on her credit report. Okay. Um, because it was reporting on her credit report, we wanted to go ahead and, and send out a dispute um, over to the bureaus. So we decided to go ahead and uh, um, send out a dispute. We, once we sent out the dispute to the bureaus, uh, we went ahead and uh, we got the information and in, in this particular case deleted. Right. So what happens is when you sent out a dispute to the bureaus and the information gets deleted, it doesn't mean that the balance just fizzled out. Right. That's very important, that's key. A lot of the times too, and, and this I, I get a lot from different consumers, people yeah. that call us, and people are under the impression that the, if, if the information gets deleted from your credit report, then there is no financial obligation. And that is actually incorrect. That's that's right. I mean, there's two things in credit. There's, remember guys, to every account, there's two different things, mm -hmm. which is what, what Husto was about to say. There's the financial responsibility of the account, and then there is the what is getting reported yeah. on your credit, which is what hurts your credit scores. Not the balance on the account, but the type of account is what takes a toll on your credit report. Okay? Definitely. So a lot of us, we think that by paying it, it's gonna go away, no. Okay, what Husso's trying to say is once you pay it, all it does, it updates the account from going from an unpaid charge of our collection to a paid charge of our collection. Not only that, but by making a payment, you are re-aging the account. And in a sense, it could also have a negative impact on your credit. Mm -hmm. So one, a quick tip out here. If you are considering, or in this particular case, your main focus is maybe not to have healthier credit, but you want to take care of this debt, kill two birds in one stone. True. So when you talk to the creditor and or the collection company in this particular case, let them know that you wanna go ahead and settle the account. Um, you know, a few quick tips with regards to that is, once you go ahead and do um, and do the what's called the payment for deletion, yeah. you have to try to obtain a letter from them that says that once they fulfill, or once you complete the full payment, that they're agreeing to delete. You need that verbiage, guys. Make sure, because yeah. guys, it's happened to a lot of my clients where they think that they're getting a letter for deletion, but at the end of the day, they're the letter is just a receipt. It's basically just stating that the debt had been, has been settled. And that's absolutely fine, but the verbiage specifically that you're looking for is the one that states Delete. that they're going to request the deletion or the removal of those accounts to the credit agencies. Because what happens is, once you get that letter and you satisfy the debt, now you don't have to worry no longer about the debt and right. you could use that letter send that over shoot that over to the three bureaus and guess what you're deleting the information from your credit report and you're also satisfying the balance right in that turn which in this particular case is, is what we're working on right now because mm -hmm. what tends to happen is, is um, early in the conversation we were talking sometimes we think we send out a dispute to the um, to the bureaus because the information is being reported the information gets deleted but then all of a sudden a, a, another collection company comes and buys the debt right. from the original um, creditor. So in that particular case, now you have the same balance. Um, you might have a different name because it's a different uh, yeah. company, different, a different name account and number. Different account number, right? So in that particular case, guess what's going to happen? Then again, the information is going to be there. So another solution for you guys out there: when disputing an account, dispute it with the original creditor. Go to the source, guys. Once it goes, it's out of the original creditor's uh, database. The per probability se. of it coming back is slim it's to none. Exactly. Exactly. So now, but there is a thing though, which obviously we talk about, because there's some creditors that might not be reporting. For the ones that are referring to, mm -hmm. we're referring to original creditors such as like Bank of America, Macy's, Victoria's Secret, um, those type of companies. Yeah. But companies like T-Mobile that don't really report, it's uh, gonna be a little yeah. bit difficult. Like yeah. let's say um, Comcast doesn't report on your credit here mm -hmm. in the state of Florida, but guess what? If you default on it, they will give you a collection and it right. will come onto the report. A lot well, to what Hus was uh, talking about, there's a lot of accounts out there. A lot of their utilities, uh, like he said, uh, like uh, for cell phones, um, in some some cases, like I don't know, utility bills, utility uh, bills, uh, water, or cable, even gas. even if you buy, let's I don't know, you go buy some furniture, they are uh, some a bed or something like that. They will not report on your credit as long as you're on time. But as soon as you default on it, as soon as soon as you have a late payment, 
they'll be the first ones to hit the credit report. So for you guys out there obviously considering a paint and collection, to wrap up and some of um, the information that we just went over, mm -hmm. do your homework, do your due diligence. Get a copy of the credit report. Yep. If it's not reporting on your credit report, then it's very likely, slim to none, that they're gonna take that account to the next level. Correct. Honestly, if your goal is to have healthy credit, then you shouldn't even be worrying about that. Yep. Second thing too, if it is reporting on your credit report, then go ahead and send out a dispute um, to the bureaus um, disputing the accuracy of the information on that account. Right. If the account gets deleted, fantastic. And if it ever comes back, focus on the original creditor. Right. right. Or in that particular case, if you could do it from the rips, do it from the beginning, do them both at the same time. This right. way you could ensure that the information will get deleted and it will stay off. Also remember uh, about that letter for deletion. Okay, in some cases, if you are, you know, if you go ahead and dispute and you want to try to settle the debt, but at the same time, get that receipt specifically to help you remove it. Now, be mindful that it's going to be difficult. It's not easy. That, I mean, I we've recently tried and we have to call these people several times before we can get them to, to do it. So just don't give up if you call the first time and they don't want to give it to you. I mean, just keep trying, keep pushing. You gotta keep pushing guys, yeah. escalate it, look for a manager. Don't always take the first bit that they give you. Mm -hmm. If anything, tell them that you need to go ahead and speak to your wife, speak to your spouse in order for you to make the decision. Right. Don't make the decision on the spot. Call them the next day. They make notes, they make information. Um, notes of, of information that you just covered. So yeah. what happens is that they have a trail. They see that you're obviously making the attempt. After the second or third attempt, then by then you should have already minimized the amount of uh, money that they're actually requesting from you. Hopefully by then you're saving 60, 70% of that debt. Yep. Um, I think that pretty much that pretty it much up. sums it up, guys. guys. Guys, if you have any questions, any yep. concerns here at Buildware Strategies, we offer a free credit evaluation. Like, uh, comment, subscribe. <laughs> let us know what you need, what other topics you want us to hit. And let's, let us help you. Let us know exactly what you guys have. And uh, we'll continue to roll more videos out for you guys on the next time. Thank you so much for the love and support. Peace.